Well, I wish someone uh, would have told me a few years uh, into the ministry. Because when I first got born again, all I did is spend time with Jesus. Somewhere along the line, uh, this pressure to produce came in like a fox in the vineyard. Began to complicate my life. I, I wish someone would have taught me that the highest call is to love Jesus and come into union with Him. It's to literally dissolve as a man and become united with God. That's man's chief goal is to become one with the Savior, Jesus Christ, right? Now, some simple keys. I wanted to, to mention what I just mentioned, uh, to build a base. Because it's very clear we understand that this whole thing is about becoming one with Jesus and loving Him. Now, this is how that happens. Number one, we must hear His voice when He invites us. We've got to hear it. If we're going to hear a whisper, we have to drown out the noise. Have to. When I say noise, I don't mean like a, a stereo. That might be part of it, or a TV. But life itself is, has, has, is there's a noise that comes with it. It's distraction. The cares of the world. This desire to succeed. This desire to produce and go and come back and be here and be there. All of that's noise. It's a, it intoxicates the soul. We must hear the gentle voice of the shepherd. And then the next step is to acknowledge that voice. We have to acknowledge it. You know, Jesus makes a statement in the book of Revelation. It's amazing. As he's talking, he said, he who's listening, let him hear the Spirit and understand. <laughs> That's incredible. This was Jesus talking, but somehow out of his mouth was the voice of the Spirit. He's talking and he says, you must hear the voice of the Spirit. We must hear the Spirit. We must hear his invitation. It's the love of God shed abroad always by the Spirit. Come unto me. All ye who are weary and heavy laden, I'll give, I'll give you rest. Again, we read, quicken me, and I'll call unto you. Draw me, and I'll run after you. We must recognize the invitation that might come through an inner call, an inner pull of the Holy Ghost. That might come through the voice of a preacher right now as you're listening. That might come through being in church. That might come through waking up in the middle of the night and feeling, I have to be with him right now have to be with him. We must recognize it. Once we recognize it by the Holy Ghost, we must realize who it is that is inviting us. The God of the ages, the King, now brings me into his chamber. To reject him is quite dangerous. You know, the Bible does say, kiss the son lest he be angry. Well, can't do that. So we must hear and recognize. Number two, realize who it is that's calling us. It's the great I am. Now, after that, uh, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that he who comes to God must believe that he is. When you go to God every day, it needs to be no more complicated than going to God. A prayer list, that might be a small portion of what we do. But the reality is, is that we, flesh and dust, are coming to meet with God. Now, once you do that, still yourself. Still yourself. Direct all attention to God and God alone. And that comes through silence because that's where God dwells. Stillness and a silence. Be still and know I'm God. Or in other words, be still and know God. Be still and come into fellowship and union with God as God knew Adam. So stillness brings that. Once God is, once we are made aware of God, give Him the worship that He's due. How do I do that? You just pour your love on Him. You just pour your love on Him. You worship. worship is a posture of the heart. I really believe that, that agendas in prayer are so dangerous. You know, I, I do because we become mechanics with spiritual recipes and ingredients, these conglomerates of spiritual desire that we can press God's buttons. No, He's there and He's real. He who comes to God must believe that He is, that He is what? That He's there. Once you begin to worship that God and you fix your heart on Him, you will become a vessel of prayer. You literally become to use your being to become a written letter 
or a written epistle. You become prayer in that moment. What is prayer? Prayer is this, God doing all things in a man. The man himself becomes a prayer. The man himself becomes the expressed desire of God on earth. And so that's a very short, there's some, some you know, very simple keys. And getting through them may take hours. It may take 30 minutes. But the real key is this. Turn your heart to God. And when I say God, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, turn your heart to Him. 